Now, it seems to me that there is a peculiar mood in our country right now. More than ever before, Great Britain feels like a divided nation. And it's at times like this, when so much divides us as a people, that I think we need to seek out those things that unite us and use them to make the bonds between us stronger. For example, ladies and gentlemen, and I think this is true, whether you are black or white, rich or poor, young or old, I'm sure we can all agree that when you're at a bar, the person trying to get served by doing that is a dick. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> it's such a weird, unnatural thing to do. You're not even holding the money between your thumb and forefinger, which is how you hold most things, is between those two fingers the cigarette fingers, in a way that suggests I can't even be bothered to hold my own money properly. I don't really care. Why would you fold a note like that? You must have done that on purpose. Notes aren't normally folded like that, are they? Most wallets look something like that, don't they? So most notes are folded like that. Unless you've got a wallet that looks like that, there is no excuse for holding a note that looks like that, is there? <laughs> As far as I can see, there are only two situations in which it is acceptable to fold a note like that. One is in a magic trick, and the other <laughs> is in a stripper's thong. And <laughs> let's be honest, neither of those is anything to be proud of. <laughs> what is this gesture really trying to achieve? Do you really think the bar staff are looking at the throng of people trying to get served and thinking, oh, they all look thirsty, but which of them can afford a drink? <laughs> Which one of them's got actual currency? Such an arrogant thing, such an arrogant gesture, it really winds me up. In fact, I have started a bit of a campaign on this topic. We have got a logo, there it is. Uh, we've got a slogan, don't be a notefold cock. And <laughs> if you want to join the campaign, there is a website. Say no to notefold cockery. Uh, <laughs> dot com. Feel free to come and join. It is early days, but I think it's going quite well. In fact, in my local, they've actually got a sign on the bar. Because it's on the bar, and it sort of speaks from the pub to the customer, they have changed the slogan ever so slightly. So their sign says, these people get served last. <laughs> don't be a notefold cock. Uh, if you don't believe me, there it is on the bar, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if I zoom in, you can see the detail, see the wording. I mean, the truth is, I imagine they'll take it down when they find it. But it's there. <laughs> it's there at the moment. <laughs> and that's the important thing. Now, we've been talking about the way we behave at a bar, about manners. Essentially, we've been talking about queuing. And queuing, I think, is seen as a fundamentally British quality. It's something that we like to think we're very good at. And I'd like to think that we were, because queuing represents something important in life. Queuing represents democracy and civility. Queuing says, yes, I am younger, I am stronger than you. You are old and you are frail, but you were here before me. And so I will not exercise my physical advantage. I will allow you to go first. That is a wonderful thing. So maybe it's no surprise that no lesser source than Debrett's describes queuing as an aspect of British behaviour, saying, where other nationalities mass frenziedly, the British queue. Yeah? Good old us. Turn up at a railway station or a supermarket or a post office and you will see an orderly queue. And maybe that's true at a railway station, or a supermarket, or a post office. But it's not true at a bar, is it? <laughs> at a bar, it is every man for himself. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And the reason for that is we've given responsibility for who chooses who's next to the one person who is not equipped to decide who is next. The barman. If you're a barman, you're looking out at a crowd of people like that. <laughs> and you're supposed to remember in what order they arrived. But you can't possibly know that, because every time you serve someone, the lineup changes in small, subtle ways. Basically, we are expecting bar people to play the tea tray, tea towel memory game <laughs> with human faces while serving drinks and counting money and serving people. That is not humanly possible. No wonder mistakes get made. I'll show you what I mean. Right? Let's say that this is a queue of people at a bar, OK? This is the front line at a bar, and there's a space that has just opened up, as you can see. Now, let's imagine that we are the person sliding into that space, OK? Now, if that's you, the only thing you know at that point is that you are ninth, OK? Now, this is just an example, obviously. I wouldn't want you to think that I would actually drink in the kind of places where that many people wore hats. Um, it's just... <laughs> just an example. And for whatever reason, the barman hasn't realised that you're the most recent arrival. He makes eye contact with you and he says, what would you like? 
Now, there is no reason on earth why you should not just place your order. That is how the system works. He is the man in charge. And you could do that. You could shaft everyone else in that queue. <laughs> what I would recommend you do instead, and it's worse in its way, is the Barlow. The Barlow. You don't make your order. You don't place your order. What you do is you say, oh, I'm sorry, that guy was here before me. And you indicate the man next to you. Now, that man, he thinks you are a saint. And so does the barman, because very few people give up their place in a queue. But you're not a saint, are you? You could have been first. No. Ah, you were meant to be ninth. But now, you're second. <laughs> because the barman thinks you're brilliant. What you've done is, instead of shafting all of the others, you've shafted most of the others <laughs> and earned yourself a halo that you have absolutely no right to. <laughs> The reason this is called a barlow, it's obvious, really, isn't it? It's because in the microcosm of a bar queue, this is the moral equivalent of writing a song for charity while not paying your taxes. That's, <laughs> that's the barlow. It's obvious. It's obvious when you think about it, isn't it? It's obvious. <laughs> but even then, in what sense exactly is a bar queue orderly? Let's look at a bar key from another perspective. Let's look from above, OK? They were looking down from the ceiling. That's the bar there, OK? And that there is the barman, OK? So there's a load of people who are waiting for drinks. Now, that's meant to be a queue. I would say, in no meaningful sense, is anyone who isn't on the front row queuing. Those people are in a queue of sorts. Those people are not in a queue. Well, there's no, there's no first come, first served rule going on there. I mean, if that person there is able to make that manoeuvre, <laughs> there is absolutely no complaint that those people can make. That is deemed fair under bar rules. That's not right, is it? That's not right. Now, let's imagine that this person here is the person being served, OK? And that means that this very valuable bit of real estate is about to open <laughs> up. And these two people are the people with an equal opportunity of occupying that bar space, OK? They are the ones with the chance to make that move, OK? Now, let's, let's examine just these people. Let's just zoom in and focus our minds on the details that matter at this point. And let's imagine that we are the person in green. And we want to be the person who gets that space at the bar. How do you do that? It all depends, doesn't it, on whether this person is going to turn clockwise or <laughs> anti-clockwise. <laughs> if they turn that way, maybe their friends are over in this corner of the bar, there is very little that we can do to stop that person leaving like so and that person entering the bar like so. You need to prevent that from happening as best you can. And there are ways of doing it. First of all, you've got to... <laughs> Get in close, try and be a barrier. If you're brave, breathe in his ear. <laughs> Let him know you're close. But crucially, and this is the most important system, hand on the bar, ladies and gentlemen, hand on the bar. <laughs> that is like 50p on a pool table. That is yours now, that cannot be removed. These are the rules, OK? The deal is still not sealed. If this person wants to turn that way, you think you're in. But if their friends are in this other corner, maybe they're going to turn that way and exit like so. In which case, it becomes another equal opportunity between the two of you, you and your opponent. So, how do you stop that from happening? It's very simple. When he's turned three quarters like so, this is the crucial detail, swap hands. <laughs> now, whatever route the person with the drinks takes, there is very little anyone can do to stop you sliding your shoulder in like so. There's nothing... <laughs> There's nothing that can be done about it. There's nothing anyone can do. It's a good technique. It's a very, very good technique. I know it's not very helpful, but oddly, this technique is also known as the Barlow. Um, <laughs> it's because, unlike in most situations, where if someone turns their back on you, you consider that rude, in this situation, you're actually there thinking, I want you back for good. Um, <laughs> that's, it's called the Barlow. And I think most of us have barlowed at some point in our lives. I know I have. Now, be honest with me. Put your hand up if you have barlowed. That is everyone. <laughs> everyone admitting that they have no respect for the first-come, first-served system. <laughs> and I know that you do, because before the show tonight, we set up a camera in the bar. <laughs> And we have seen you barlowing. <laughs> now, not everyone is very good at it. There's two people to focus on here. 
The two people to focus on are this gentleman here <laughs> and this gentleman here. <laughs> who I can immediately identify as being in the front row. <laughs> where is your opponent, sir? Where, where is the other person? You're over there. OK, so we've got one over there and one on the front row. OK. What's your name, sir? Gio. Gio. Gio, you are not good at barlowing. <laughs> Practice. You are not good, okay? There's a person between these two people. We're just going to watch the moment where they leave and watch what happens. <laughs> Useless barlowing! Some of the worst barlowing I have seen in a long time from Joe. Other people are good at barlowing. Uh, the person we're looking at in this video is a man who's currently at the back with a sort of top knot and the grey T-shirt. Where are you? Oh, that, right, OK, in the middle of the third row. In the middle of the third... What's your name, sir? Christian. Christian. Now, you're quite good at barlowing here. <laughs> it's quite a few people. Hand on the bar! <laughs> Hand on the bar! This woman hasn't got a chance! <laughs> Off she goes. You're in! <laughs> you're in! Congratulations on good barlowing. Congratulations to you. You are as rude as anyone and good at it. <laughs> For that reason, after the show, I, I always have to go and get makeup and whatever I could do with a drink. Could I give you some money? <laughs> and will you get me a drink afterwards? I've got my wallet. Um... <laughs> would, you, um... would you pass that back to Christian? Thanks. Get yourself one, get me one, and keep the change. <laughs>